It's me, Jim, still working on toilets. The next little project we're going to do is to replace uh, the ball cock and this one with a fluid master. Um, to do this, obviously, you have to turn the water off because the, the fill valve goes through a hole in the bottom of the tank. So you want to make sure you get as much water out of the tank as you can. Flush the tank and let it evacuate as much water as possible. Use your shop back to suck the rest of the water out of the bottom of the tank. from the standpipe and you can take the cap off you won't need that with the fluid master disconnect the water line from the base of the fill valve you'll get a little water coming out but we'll get that up unscrew the nut on the bottom of the fill valve Most of the water that comes out when you take the supply line off is water that's in the tube for the fill valve. And it has to go somewhere when you take it apart. So don't panic on it if you get a little water. Just lift it out. Drop it in your bucket. This is the most commonly used replacement fill valve with the Fluid Master 400. Take it apart and uninstall it. It's just a little easier to handle that way. This rubber seal comes in two pieces that are molded together. The inside part you won't be using. You would only use that if you did not have a, a preformed uh, water supply tube, and that's a story for a whole different day. Um, <clears throat> Insert the tube through the hole in the bottom of the tank. Tighten it down. And reconnect the water supply line. Often uh, the lock nut for the um, Fluid master and the compression nut for the supply line will have tabs on them so you can do that without even using a, a pair of channel locks or a wrench. And go ahead and get the rest of the water up off the floor now. dragging my shoes around in and making a big mess on the floor. That's how I'm going to do it. Now that I have the tube with the fluid master in the tank and the water supply hooked back up, one of the things I like to do is to make sure that I flush the tube out so that in the case there's any dirt or grit or anything like that in the water line, it gets blown out and it doesn't cause a, a problem with the fluid master after you've put it in. To do this, I just cut my hand over the top of the tube and turn the water on. Let it run for a second, and that's it. Fluid Master has a, its own fill tube. You can apply it to the Fluid Master before you put it in, or after, if you want it this time. Now this toilet is a, a modern toilet. It's a 1.6 liter per flush toilet. Uh, when I'm putting a fluid master on one of these, I like to push it down as far as it'll go so the tank doesn't overfill and you get a, uh, an unnecessary consumption of water. Uh, 
put your keeper on the standpipe. Cut your fill tube to an appropriate length and put it over the nipple on the keeper. Don't leave that in there, that'll cause you trouble. And that's the installation of the fluid mask. Now we just turn it on and check for operation. I push the fluid master down as far as it will go is because the replacement flappers that we use generally are not the same as the original equipment. The original equipment had a little weight on it that would make it drop uh, earlier than a standard flapper. So in order to overcome that difference, that's the reason I push the uh, fluid master down as far as it will go. The tank doesn't fill up to as high a level so it doesn't use as much water to flush. And these toilets are designed for 1.6 liters anyway so you're really doing a better job. Okay, that's a fluid master.